from the break. Coming up next is five minutes of mindfulness with Shalini Bala Lucas. You guys know her, she's a fundamental part of the KTI Life and Style family. She's going to be helping us figure out how to get our minds right so we can have full body health. Hello and welcome to five minute mindfulness with me, Shalini Bala Lucas. Today I'm going to share with you one of the most powerful meditations and one of my favorite. It's called Metta Meditation. Metta means loving kindness. And let's face it, with everything that's happening in the world today, showing a bit of kindness to ourselves and to others is really necessary. So let's start straight away. First of all, putting your hand, one hand in the center of your chest, on your heart. All about men. <laughs> which is generally how the world works <laughs> but no we are actually having very necessary discussions on men their mental health and now coming up is a conversation where I will be talking to two men very excited to introduce them we're going to be looking at the man up mentality when you're growing up as a child and you're told man up when you fall or as a girl when you see your brother do something and, he, yeah, and you're like wait man up or you're speaking to you know other men in your life now as an adult and you're telling them you know real men they do this thing real men they behave like that yes so i'm going to be talking to those men about all of that and whether the mana mentality has done more harm than good today we are going to be looking at mental health but not just any kind of mental health. We are talking to the gentlemen today. We are looking at men's mental health and your struggles and your battles. You know, life is hard for men. So we decided to give them this one episode. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We're obviously going to be having a lot more discussions about that. But I'm very excited to introduce the two guests that I'm going to be talking to today. I am speaking to Amani Maranga and Chito Ndogu. And Chito Ndogu is a radio presenter at Kiss 100, a hype man, a voice artist, and a busy man. But you guys should check out his Instagram because on his Instagram, he talks about a lot of issues that men face in love, you know, but from a male perspective. Many of our African homes, the dad was looked at like the lion. Yeah, true. When He's dad comes, rrr, everyone runs yeah, everywhere. True. So that becomes your emotional intelligence. So what's your emotional intelligence towards men? And then Amani, you guys know him. He is the podcaster. His podcast is called Living Truthfully. It's just amazing. If you haven't listened to it and you're a Kenyan, specifically if you're a man, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is a, it's a familiar feeling to me. I've watched things that I've put my energy in die. I've watched my relationships die. I've watched my business die. I've watched some friendships die. Some I actually killed myself. Well, not, not the people, the friendships in KT. And I was just getting back to a good space. I was just, I was, I was getting my break. In fact, I knew that 2020 was my year. Anyway, I'm Susan Jorge. I'm going to be taking you through this conversation today. Let's meet the guests. Hi, guys. Hey. How are you? Hey, Susan. Salama, salama. Very good. Thank you for that introduction. You're very yeah. welcome. Wondering, I'm like, who is she talking about? Who, who are these? Who are these? Who are these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I usually joke and I say I make a podcast for men, but that's listened to by women. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. very Steve. That's actually true. And encouraging. Because, interesting yeah. and encouraging. It is encouraging, right? <laughs> yes, it is encouraging. At least they get to understand us better now. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, guys, should I, should I leave you two alone? Try. I? I can go. Yeah. <laughs> you can meet me here. <laughs> How are you doing? What's here? I mean, I'm joking. You know, I'm joking. fantastic, by the way. <laughs> I love the background in your house, man. Oh, thanks. Um, that's, uh, that's my little bookshelf to confuse my enemies. <laughs> it has all the books that you don't read. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and then pictures of my kids and, uh, you know, that lion to remind me who I am. Yeah. This is amazing. I'm very excited to be talking to the both of you. Now, uh, Chito, we can start off with you. Um, for anybody who is watching, um, tell them what you do, why it's important to you, and... The bigger question is why do you why are you so vocal in society? What gives you that hope yeah. to talk to men? Yeah. I mean personally I think first of all, one of the things that has always 
reacted in my mind when I am thinking is because I grew up in a home where I had a mom and a dad, right? Mm -hmm. And in a Kenya of today, that is a privilege. I mean, even just globally, it's a privilege to be able to say, hey, I knew my dad, I knew my mom. I did not realize how important it was to have my father's presence till I got much older in terms of uh -huh. interacting with other people made me realize, wait, Kumbe, it's not a normal thing to have a father figure. And I mean, my dad, I always say, is one of the greatest father figures. It's not a normal thing. It's actually there are people who don't have that. And so having walking into that journey, interacting even, I mean, with friends, we had cousins growing up who'd never had a father. I didn't realize we were actually sharing a father. It's only like in my older years when now you'd have like a male cousin of mine, like, oh, I learned this from your dad. Or my female cousins would be like, I learned this from your father. And I realized, oh, snap, it means there's actually a gap somewhere when it comes to men, men issues. Mm -hmm. And also the great thing I always say, they always say it takes a village to raise kids. But I think the only people who know what it's like are people of the same sex. Women are the ones who know what it's like to be a woman. It is right. men who understand better what it's like to be a man. Because there are certain things men generally face in a similar circumstance. A man will be like, hey, chief. It's not done like this and you look at it, ah, okay, cool. I get where you're coming from. So that for me is where my passion started driving. I mean, more conversations with more people and I've always felt men don't talk as much mm -hmm. or we are given the illusion of we shouldn't talk as much. Right. We are given an idea that we are given an image of silence. We're given an image of more silence is power but we're not taught of a perfect balance between the talking and the keeping silent. So for me, it was, hey, let me just pour out my heart on what I think about and what I feel I need to talk about. And uh, yeah, so far, so good. And it's actually my wife who encouraged me to do it. I was not going to do it. Oh, really? My wife was like, you have, some, you have some good points. When we are having conversations in the house, you have some good points. People need to hear those good points. I like that. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. credit to her but also credit to you for continuing and we really appreciate yeah. you you know that is a lot <laughs> maybe that's not necessarily how you grew up um money yeah. you i guess what chito is talking about is essentially what you're doing on your podcast and you've talked about the fact that you make a podcast about men but for women to listen to um no, actually I, I make it for men but women mm, listen to it but women it's, listen it's, for to men, it. it's, a, it's by men I, I, I intentionally made it a complete male space, uh, an exclusive mm -hmm. male space, and uh, but I found that a lot of women like. So I have a, I have an almost 50-50 audience uh, uh -huh. in terms of male and female. So I have I think 46% male and 42% female. Oh, nice. um, and that's and that's just because I realized that and I what what I had from at least the, the women in my life that listen to my podcast is that they rarely hear the male perspective as mm. vulnerably as it is shared on the podcast. And so they find it interesting because they get insight, like, like Chito was saying, into the man mind, into the man, mm. uh, into the man life and man lifestyle. So, yes. so yeah, but I want, to, I want to agree with Chito on, on, on a few things. So first, I've just realized when he was saying about how men talk and then we say, hey, Chief, things are not done like that. I realized that, you know, men have all these titles for each other. Yeah? We have <laughs> Chief Mugwa. <laughs> um, you know, like we have all these, we have all these titles for each other. I just wondered for a second, do chicks have the same, you know? No, they call it I literally was just thinking that. And I was like, why are men's terms, they're so like, you know, you're bigging up somebody, it's mkubwa, you know, hey king, like it's always like, so as women, I'm like, I think our terms are not. Is it, is it like chiefess? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, Empress, I'm just Empress is the only one. Empress. Rastafarian yeah, that's, case. that's very cool. So like if a Rastafarian <laughs> guy calls me Empress, I'm just like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's one of the things about uh, and and I talk about mental health for men. Um, you know, men generally are in honoring relationships with each other. 
you know, uh, and 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 here yeah, that's an insight right there into how we how we refer to each other, to each other. Men will always, you know, sort of refer to each other with some sense of honor. You'll find that most men, even when they are talking to a wachi, they'll still call him chief. They'll still call him Yes. You know, yes. They still have that honoring uh, space mm. to each other, and and I think that's a very important insight into what would create. So for me, I'm about creating safe spaces. Yes. for men to be able to to have real authentic and vulnerable conversations mm -hmm. so the, so men would generally not and i let me say, let me speak for myself i didn't feel like i could always speak my mind it didn't okay. feel safe yeah mm -hmm. i feel like either i'll be criticized I'll, uh, my, my my thoughts will be uh, invalidated or you know mm -hmm. uh, a man will say something and then somebody else will quickly shoot it down Mm -hmm. uh, but then you see, when we speak among men, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. Right. Only now you you you've grown up in a society like Chito says where you're not encouraged to speak so much. Eh? So mm -hmm. we, so even when we're among men, where we should actually feel safe, we don't. Mm -hmm. And so we end up not being vulnerable. We don't end up being uh, speaking our minds. And yeah. the truth about where mental health is breaking for men. It's just because we don't have an outlet. We don't have a safe outlet. Space, yeah. Uh, for all the emotions, yeah. all the pressure that we're feeling. We don't have a safe outlet for that. So, and talking is one of them. Talking is one that's, you know, mostly encouraged. There's other yeah. things, there's sports, there's, there's other things. But you see, even then, what they do is they create a safe space to create an outlet. And I think mm -hmm. men need to now allow themselves first vulnerable conversations mm -hmm. but also allow themselves you know create amongst themselves sp safe spaces for them to mm -hmm. be able to say hey boss i'm struggling you know yeah. I'm stuff. this is what's mm -hmm. happening or i'm struggling at home or i had a fight with my mama and this is what mm -hmm. it made me feel i think she's being unfair and a guy will listen to you and not shoot you down you know mm -hmm. uh if you go and have a a similar conversation with a friend who's female and say I had a conversation with my mama and this is what happened. Already there you've compromised many things. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is very, very true. You've compromised your relationship with your wife. You've compromised mm. how that mama sees you as well. You know, mm. you've compromised so many things. And so men yeah. need to create these spaces for each other. I like that. No, um, safe spaces wow. is definitely it. You hit the nail on the head um, because mm -hmm. women created a culture of talking amongst ourselves, right? And created mm -hmm. a culture of giving women that leeway, you know, creating an mm -hmm. open space. I'm like, okay, I won't judge you. Just come and first be able to talk to me. And mm -hmm. it's a great challenge to pose to women because we should be able to do the same with another gender. If my brother wants to talk to me, my kuzo, my friend who's a man, they should know I can be able to go to Susan and she won't judge me. She'll just listen first, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the most important thing. Um, now, speaking of creating safe spaces, this conversation we're having, um, me and my producer wanted to talk about uh, the man up mentality yeah so when you're told to man up the first time will probably be uh when you're a child i have brothers so when you have a child and then start like from you know and then either another man or even a woman will say ah you know a man you're not supposed to cry like that man up uh, maybe your first breakup or your first big failure you're told man up, man up when maybe perhaps that wasn't the right time or that wasn't the right way to deal with that situation but other times, I don't know, maybe it is. Maybe it helps a man build character. And that's a conversation that I want you guys to help me figure out today. Amani, on your podcast, Living Truthfully, you did an episode on masculinity in the 21st century. And I was so happy because you interviewed um, Kimafi, who I went to school with, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes truly. That, that's his stage name. Yes, and I really yes, like truly. that guy. Very sharp guy. I love Very, it. very sharp guy. <laughs> so when you were having that conversation and you talk about masculinity in the 21st century, um, can you tell us a little bit, if you agree, do you think this man up thing that you're told as you grow up does more harm than good in your own personal experience? I, I think, you know, everything is in context, okay? So, so what does, when, when you tell someone man up, what do you mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a divide of two things. So there's man up where you're being told, you know, uh, like you said, 
you know, in a, as a child growing up, you know, as a, you know, take the pain, don't show emotion, um, mm -hmm. you know, those things. So that, that, that is, that is, um, I think that's negative. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what it does is that it teaches a man to hide, to deny, mm -hmm. or to yes. suppress the things that they are feeling, you know? Yeah. Because that, that level of manning up, what you're saying is suck it up. It's actually, it's actually suck it okay. up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And so you that's where you, you know men are taught not to express themselves. And so mm. you start having all these bottled up things because you're either hiding it, you're either denying it or suppressing it. Mm -hmm. And those things will later come up and show up as character issues, you know. Mm -hmm. But then there is the, on the other side, there's another side to that coin where you can tell someone man up, and basically you're telling them take initiative. Right. You know? There's a, there's a positive element to it. Uh -huh. You're telling the guy, don't be a victim, you know? Mm. Uh, don't always be a victim. There's a different perspective, you know? Take charge, mm. take control, take power, you know, and do something about your, your situation. And I think there's a, the, that is a, is a positive uh, way to look at it. And I would actually tell, I'd, I'd tell my boys, is that, is that you guys, you've got, to take, you've got to take back power in a place where maybe it's being, some, you know, uh, at work. Is being mm. treated in a certain way, you know. You're telling, okay, you've got to, you've got to take initiative in solving these relationship problems. Mm -hmm. You've got to take initiative in, you know, confronting your boss. You've got to take yeah. initiative in, you know, sorting out your finances or, you know, mm -hmm. making that's that's money up, you know. And yeah. so, I think there's there's a context. That's what I was mm. trying to say. There's a context. Context. In, yeah. In, there's a context that's good. Right. That's mm. someone you know, man up, take initiative, uh -huh. uh, take power, be in charge, and yeah. you know, take control of your circumstances, don't be a victim. Mm -hmm. And then but there's even, a part yeah. that, that tells a, a man, hide your feelings, deny your feelings, mm -hmm. yeah. suppress them, and that mm -hmm. for me is, is negative. Right. Yeah. So, just in addition to something that Amani is saying, eh? mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think also it comes from a place where for men, for us, in terms of life, we are viewed at a value perspective. Women are viewed at an honor perspective. So right. women, ha women, it's like they already compose the value as you are growing up. Uh -huh. But for a man, you are building your value like you are building wealth, essentially speaking. So you would be looked at differently. And so it, as, as Amani was saying, you have this different context of man up because as a man, you're constantly thinking, where is my value? Right. Or someone is constantly trying to tell you, create your value as a man. Because they will not look at you. I mean, the way we were saying before, chief, chairman are the guys, at, if you are in a social setup, those are the guys who are spending money on the drinks. That's chief. That's chairman. Yeah. But you see that is seated in the corner is not chairman in fact usually that one is baba hey baba come through like it's because in our mindsets we've created a a man's value is attached to something so we are constantly saying man up man up because you're trying it's a constant it's like a what's that word i'm looking it's like a communication and an intended communication of you need to be up somewhere you need to be doing something you need to get something so the context, as you say, I mean, it's a very, it's a very simple word as it appears, but has a lot of different meanings at a different point. Yeah. I like what you said about men feel like you have to be doing something. You must be, women were always talking about self-care, massage, take a day to sleep. Like that's like the day that you can find um, as a special thing. For men, you always have to be doing something. I was having a conversation this weekend and I was laughing. Um, at my dad and my brother and my uncles because if they nap or they sleep let's say maybe you've had a lunch you eat a lot of food you have it mm. then an dose whenever men sleep <laughs> and they wake up they're like sorry 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 and i'm like why are you apologizing for sleeping it's an okay thing to do you weren't doing something wrong but it's, it's not an okay thing to do a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms, <laughs> and poverty will be your body. I mean, these are the things in the Bible. These are the things that were just grained in us. You know, that's what I think. In the morning, Annie, I'm turning like this. I want to kanyanga blanketi a bit for a bit more. Let me just yeah. hear in your mind a little sleep, 
a little slumber. <laughs> ah, you can't sleep in peace anymore. And you know what? I like I like what Chito was saying. Let me let me can I jump onto it yeah. and say yeah. that that is fundamentally something that is wrong with um, male pers with how men are perceived. Mm -hmm. The fact that the value of a man has mm. it's not about him, right? Mm. But it's about things around him, it's external. Mm. Mm. And so the man derives his value from a job title, which mm -hmm. really you're saying he derives value from a business card, mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. he derives value from a, a number in the bank account or yeah. in the MPESA account, you know, mm. he derives value from a moti he's driving or the neighborhood that he lives in, it's mm. not it's not him. Mm. True, true, true. It's things it around It has nothing him. to do with the actual man. Mm. Exactly, and so he, he thinks of himself as valuable based on those things, mm -hmm. and mm. everybody around him will derive his value as well from those things, mm. and that's, I mean, I can tell you for sure, a man who is broke, and is of good character, honest, loving, all those mm. things will remain single because <laughs> No, can I tell you that, I, is, that is a hard it's a, that blow was such a hard truth. It's like boom money. Let me cool. tell you something. I am only <laughs> 35 years old, but in the last five or six years, eh, I discovered how hard life actually is, right? So when you're born, you go to school and you do all that. I had the privilege of going to university, you go to university, you finish. And when you come out into the world, things are hard. So now that I'm 25, what I also started realizing, because when you're 25, it's just a me, me, me show, right? So I started to stop looking at me and I actually started looking you know, around and I looked at my dad and I looked at my brothers and I was like, life is hard like hard, hard for a woman and our challenges are different, but life is hard for men. Like it's, there is this pressure you're born with out of nowhere because you're born as a man. And I like what you said, Chito, about it being related to the value that you can bring to the world, all through physical mm -hmm. things, right? So I was having a conversation mm -hmm. with my brother and I'm like, for him at his age, he needs to have a house, a car, a job or a business, mm. and then everyone is like, that's fine, that's a good man. Huh? You're not ready for other things. You can take on other responsibilities in your community. You can now have a wife, you can now have a... And I'm like, mm. why can you have a wife because you have a car and a house and a job? That's not, mm. no, that, uh, uh, no, that's not how it works. Um, Chito, you had a very mm. interesting conversation um, with Simon, and you guys were talking mm. about um, mental health, but how some people can now be taking on mental health as some kind of crutch, right? How mm -hmm. people can be taking advantage of the mental health situation mm. and conversation. I was even having a conversation with my mom and she was saying, there's children who are giving their parents a very hard time because you claim, mm. you're 